golden ticket. Um, as Dennis told you, it's based on the story of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Uh, I had not read that story in these years. It's really wonderful. Uh, and I was looking at the score, and the score says, uh, it has the principals looking down through, and they say, look down on the candy field. There flows a mighty chocolate river that plunges down into a distant frothing waterfall beyond the mass of twisting glass pipes which suck the foaming chocolate up from the bottom of the waterfall. How in the world are they going to do that? And then there's another scene calls for a magic elevator to fly to the top of a building and land Charlie at his house. And I, I can't wait to see how they, they produce this magic for us with the things they can do on stage. But the Atlanta Opera Company is constantly producing magic for us. So it's going to be fun to see what they do. Uh, the, the gist of the story uh, is that a strange fella called Willy Wonka uh, makes the world's best candy in a, in a factory, uh, in this strange factory, and he hadn't let anybody in for over 20 years, and he decides that he's going to let five lucky children who can find a golden ticket in a candy bar come and take the tour of his magical factory. And a very poor orphan boy named Charlie Bucket miraculously finds one of the tickets, so he's going to get to go on the tour, along with four other children who are, um, and they're, you're flattering them when you say they are obnoxious. They're obnoxious and ill-behaved, and they're going to get the just desserts. But um, anyhow, Charlie is going to have a happy ending, because in the end, Charlie's going to inherit the chocolate factory, which is wonderful. So it's both a morality play and a journey into a magical world. Um, that will beguile children of all ages. Uh, I don't know another opera like this, and it's hugely entertaining. And the music, uh, don't expect Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Uh, it may be, you know, have children in mind, but it's very, very complicated. It's a very contemporary score, but I'll tell you that it's not, uh, it's not the kind of contemporary score that's gonna make you stop up your ears. It uh, uses a musical vocabulary that is very accessible. And I, I think you're going to like it. Uh, it's written by an American called Peter Ash, who turned 50 this year. And uh, he may has not been known, that well known, but now he's going to be known because of this opera. And it was highly praised when it was opened in uh, St. Louis last year. So um, I, I think that Atlanta office, uh, uh, audiences are going to love it. And I, I really salute Dennis and his team for bringing this opera to us. It's, we've never done anything quite like it. I've gotten wondering how in the world are they going to put all of this on the stage? And uh, here to tell us, uh, we're going to have a little interview now with the stage director who will be coming in to uh, make all of this happen on our stage, and it's Michael Shell. Michael? Now, like before I ask you some questions, uh, let me tell the audience a little bit about you, if I may. Uh, Michael began his operatic career as a boy soprano with the Metropolitan Opera and then the New York City Opera. He got his master's of music degree just up the road in North Carolina at the North Carolina School for the Arts. Uh, he's performed as a singer all over the country, but more recently he has taken on uh, directing responsibilities and he's especially uh, prepared to uh, direct Golden Ticket in Atlanta because he helped direct the production when it was given in St. Louis at his premiere last year and at the Wexford Festival. So welcome, welcome, Michael. Thank you. Great. Can you tell us about some of the special challenges of, of directing a Golden Ticket and how you're going to make all of those special effects work? One of the things I will describe is the boat. There's a boat sequence where they are, as you are probably familiar with, they are traveling down the river into the mysterious factory. And our production is a very simple pink with boat and with a, a front and a back and then uh, nothing in the middle actually with four oars. And what we do is through choreography, through the movement of the singers and with projections, um, we create a, this effect that feels as if they are on this wild, crazy river going to this factory. So it's, it's quite wonderful. It sort of takes on a kinetic approach to the whole production in that respect. Is this really an opera that's going to work for, for children? 
Absolutely. I think, well, I think not only children, but adults as well. I mean, because the production that we've done is very much like eye candy in that respect, keeping within this sort of chocolate confectionery, you know, magical place. It keeps you stimulated both visually, but also the characters, the way that Peter Ash has composed the characters. They're so rich and vivid that it, it it, you can't help but get lost in this story. And children, the children that I have spoken to, and I've spoken to quite a lot after the productions that we did in St. Louis and Wexford, they could go on about the many little minute aspects of the show. They mentioned the, the one, uh, as they called it, the song that one of the sopranos sang, Veruca Salt, the sort of spoiled rich girl who sings over and over again, I, uh, my golden ticket, it's basically a five note commotive and very well composed and, and very intricate, but they knew exactly what it meant and they understood why she was screaming it so high and loud because she wanted it so desperately. Um, but I, you know, in, in also with children, I think it's, it's perfect for the age, the sort of the school age uh, child. And the show is not that long, um, so it, it really depends on the child, but I think any child that comes to it, six, seven years old and up, is going to have a wonderful experience, just as the parents will as well. Well, we're looking forward to it. Well, thank, thank you, so you very much. Thank you very much.